I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do, if he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I'm picking Valentine, cause on the morning do. line, the guy's guy got says him, the horse it can five to nine. But his says the horse can do. But his can do. But his half, 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 can do. But his half,
on my father. Everybody's looking for action. I just hope Nathan can find a place to well, Why Lieutenant Brannigan? Mr. South Street, it is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure! Any of you guys seen Nathan Detroit? Which Nathan Detroit is that? I mean the Nathan Detroit who's run the floating crap game around here. And getting away with it by moving it to a different spot every night. Uh, why are you telling us this, Your Honor? I'm telling you two bums this. Because I know you two work for Detroit. Rustling up customers for his... For his crap game. We do? Yeah. Oh, and I know right now he's running around looking for a spot. Well, no one's going to give him a spot. Because they all know that Brannigan's breathing down their neck. Hi, Nathan. Fellas, I'm having terrible trouble. Everyone's afraid on account of that lousy Brannigan, and I just can't Something find wrong, the... Mr. Detroit. Mm, why, hello, Lieutenant. You do not think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. Ah, oh, Mr. Detroit. I was just conversing with your colleagues about your, uh, your crap game. I imagine you're having trouble finding a place. Well, the heat is on, as you must know from the fact that, uh, you now live on a salary. Did you find a place? Oh, what does that cop want from me? What am I, a sex maniac? All I do is win a crap game for the convenience of those who want a little action. In return, I take a small cut. Is that such a crime? Yeah. Nathan, did you find a place? Did you find a place? Oh, did I find a place? Did I find a place? Yes. You know what? We're hosting our crap game tonight at the, the Radio City Music Hall. But how are you going to fix the ushers? Oh, no, I don't know. I tried all the regular places. The back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Nathan, you once said there might be a chance at the, uh, the Biltmore Garage. The Biltmore Garage. I was down at the Biltmore Garage. Spoke to Joy Biltmore himself. He said he might let me use the place if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Your marker's no good, huh? Oh, what do you mean? A marker ain't just a piece of paper that says I owe you one thousand dollars signed Nathan Detroit. A marker is like a pledge, in which a guy cannot belch on. It's like not saluting the flag. <sighs> now my marker, that's as good as gold. Only Joey Biltmore don't think so. Now I can't imagine. Me without a livelihood, why? I've been running this crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nathan, can't you do something? No, oh, what can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what day today is? It's mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged for 14 years. Nathan, concentrate on the crap game. The town's up to here with high players. The Greeks in town. Brandy Bottle Bates. Scranton and Slim. I know, I could make a fortune. But where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And now they got a lock on the door of the gym at Public School 84. There's a stock room behind McCloskey's bar, but Mrs. McCloskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are, the back of the police station is out. So the Biltmore Garage is the spot But the 1,000 bucks we ain't got Why it's good old reliable Nathan, 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 Detroit If you're looking for action, he'll burn some spots Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot Not for good old reliable Nathan For it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere, everywhere. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere. And an awful lot of lettuce for the fella who can get us there. If we only had a lousy little bread, we could be a millionaire. Good old reliable Nathan, 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 Nathan Detroit. If the size of your bundle you want to increase, you'll arrange that you go broke and quiet in peace. In a hideout provided by Nathan, where there are no neighbors to squall, is the oldest established permanent floating cracking in New York. Where's the action? Where's the game?
Now, fellas, do not worry. Nathan Detroit's crap game will float again. My men will tell you where it is. Okay, Nathan. Say, you know who else is looking for action? Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson's in Sky town. Sky Masterson? Why, he is the highest better of them all. Higher than the Greek? Higher than anybody. Why do you think they call him Sky? It's how high he bets. I once saw him bet $5,000 on a cockroach. Another time, he wouldn't take penicillin on account he had bet 10 C's his temperature would go past 104. Well, did it? Did it? He's so lucky it went up to 106. Good old Sky. How about you borrow the thousand from Sky? Mm, no. With him, it's not, it's not lending money. It's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson. I ain't afraid. I am perfectly willing to take the risk, provided we can find a bet of which there is no chance of me losing. Right. Now let's see. He likes crazy bets. Like, which lump of sugar will a fly land on? Or how far can you kick a piece of cheesecake? Cheesecake, that's it! Benny, go down the Mindy's and find out how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday. Also, how many pieces of strudel? How much cheesecake, how much strudel? What do you want to know for? Uh, Never mind, here comes Adelaide. If she hears I'm running the crap game, she will never set foot on me again. Okay, boss. Hello, Nathan. Adelaide, pigeon. Oh, you go ahead, girls. Order me a tuna fish on rye and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay. We gotta get back to the hot box. Are you still rehearsing? Yeah. That slave driver, Charlie, he's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to eat. You want to sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. So what did you say to him? I told him, I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Well, don't upset yourself. <laughs> How's your cold? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. Oh, it's a belt. Read the card. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. Oh, that's so sweet. Look, Adelaide, about your present, I was going to get you uh, a gold watch with a diamond with a diamond head and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you shouldn't have. Well, I didn't. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. <laughs> well, don't worry. One of these days, I'll be in the money, and you'll have more mink than a mink. <laughs> Nathan, darling, I can do without anything. Just so long as you don't start running that crap game again. The crap game? What an absurd thought. 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. Huh? <laughs> Yesterday. Mindy sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great! Uh, Nathan, what is this? Uh, nothing, honey. Hey, any news yet? Not yet, Harry. My men will tell you when. Okay, Detroit. Uh, what was that about? Uh, his wife's having a baby. Why is he asking you? Because he's nervous. Look, it's his first wife, and, you Nathan, know, I'm expecting... are you trying to get rid of me? No, it's just that I know you're hungry, and, fellas, why don't you take Adelaide to the drugstore? It's just that you've got a cold, and it's across the street, and there are a lot of open manholes around. Oh, Nathan, you're so thoughtful. You're just the sweetest person. Goodbye. <laughs> Masterson. Glad to see you, Sky. Nathan, you old promoter, you. How are you, Sky? You look great. Oh, feel great, Nathan. Two wonderful weeks out west of Nevada. Great place, beautiful scenery, healthful climate. And I beat him for 50 G's of blackjack. 50 G's? Say, you're gonna stay in town long? No, flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes, there is a lot of action down there. You wanna come with me? No, I can't. Say, how would you like to go down the Mindy's for some cheesecake? No, I'm not hungry. Tell me, how's Adelaide? Oh, she's fine. Still working at the hot box. I suppose one of these days you'll be getting married. Well, we all got out one of these days. But Nathan, we can fight it, guys like us, Nathan. We've got to remember that as pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to aces back to back. Mm, yeah, yeah. Say, you hungry yet? 
We could go around the Mindy's for some cheesecake or some strudel. No, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh, but you would say Mindy sells the greatest cheesecake in the country, no? Yes, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Oh, who ain't? Yet there are some people who prefer a strudel. Offhand, which do you think he sells more of? Cheesecake or strudel? Why? I never gave it much thought, but if everybody is like I am, I'd say Mindy sells much more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? Huh? For how much? Why, Nathan, I never knew you to be a betting man. You always take your percentage off the top. Well, I thought for old time's sake I'd give you a little action. I'll bet you $1,000 Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake yesterday. Nathan, let me tell you a story. Oh? When I was a young man about to go into the world, my father says to me a very viable thing. He says to me like this, son, the old guy says, I am sorry I am not able to bankroll you to a very large stop. But, not having any potatoes to give you, I am instead going to stick you to some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, a guy is going to show you a nice, brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. And then this guy is going to offer to bet you he can make the jack of spades jump out and squirt cider into your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you stand there, you're going to wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I do not claim to know that you have been clocking me these oh, well, cheesecake. Oh, think that. However, if you're already looking for some action, I will bet you the same thousand you do not know the color of the necktie you have on. No, well, obviously it's, uh... Well? It's, um... Mm, no, oh, no bet. <laughs> Blue? What a crazy color. Nathan, we took... No, Adelaide don't bother me. Hi, Sky. Good. How's it with you fellows? Not bad. Nicely, nicely, thank you. Adelaide says to pick her up after the show at the hotbox and don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, yes. Yes, dear? That is husband talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you have the kind of girl that is most difficult to unload. Well, I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. Plus, a guy without a doll, well, without a doll, who would holler at the man? A doll is a necessity. Nathan, I am not putting the rap on dolls. I just say a guy should have them around when he wants them and that they are easy to find. Not dolls like Adelaide. Nathan, figuring wait for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How come you ain't got one? How come you're going to Havana alone? I like to travel light, but if I wish to take a doll to Havana, there is a large assortment available. Not real high-class dolls. Any doll, you name her. Any doll. And I name her? Would you bet on that? Would you bet the same thousand dollars that if I chose any doll, you would take it to Havana tomorrow night? You gotta bet. All right. I choose her. Her. Cider. Someday I'm going to take a pickaxe and rip up Broadway from end to end. They do that every day. Do you take sinners here? Indeed we do. Sarah. Uh, how do you do? My name is Abernathy. Arvide Abernathy. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? What is the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin! You poor man! I have wasted my life in gambling and evil betting. But I have suddenly realized the terrible things that betting can lead to. Agatha. Coffee. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. I have been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Gladly. I would never have become a gambler if I had not fallen in with evil companions who were always offering me sucker bets. Here, young man. Thank you. It makes me feel good just to talk to you people. You just go right on talking to Sister Sarah, and you'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Very good. I wish we could reach more sinners like you. You're out every day trying. Maybe you should try the nighttime. How's that? As a former sinner, I happen to know the best time to find sinners is between midnight and dawn. You might even try having an all-night session against the devil. A very good suggestion indeed. Thank you, Brother Masterson. You're welcome. Hmm. Coffee is so good. I can't understand why it isn't a sin. Fine, old gentleman. I suppose he sort of looks after you. We look after each other. Uh-huh. I suppose if one of you goes someplace, the other goes along. Yes, of course. Of course. Here are two of our pamphlets I'd like you to read. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're holding a midnight prayer meeting on Thursday, which I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure. 
Miss Sarah, I hope you will not think I am getting out of line by saying this, but I think it is wonderful to see a pretty doll. Ah, a nice-looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Staying here in this place, do you ever go anyplace else? Travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. That's a little far. But there are a lot of wonderful places just a few hours from New York by plane. Ever been on a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Here is another pamphlet that I think you should read. Thank you. Of course, I will need a lot of personal help from you. My heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I'll be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. <laughs> Sorry, just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. Hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? That's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry, no peace unto the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 22. <laughs> Isaiah. Isaiah. There are two things been in every hotel room in the country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. I must have read the good book about eh, 10 or 12 times. You've read the Bible 12 times? Oh, what's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my business, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once went 5G's in a parlay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's 8 to 5. The others will follow. You do need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Let's be honest. This mission is laying an egg. Oh, why don't you let me help you? I'll bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When is this big meeting of yours Thursday? I will guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. I will also guarantee that they will sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? Well, it'll take us some time to get there. To get where? To my favorite restaurant. Where is that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana, Havana? What do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? Havana? Oh, why not? The plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night. And the food is great. <laughs> I now realize, Mr. Gambler, when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And now I realize, Sister Sarah, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant is, she's still a sergeant. Please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all. Except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. I'm relieved to know that it's just me and not all guys in general. It is nice to know, Miss Sarah. That somewhere in the world is a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I am not interested in what he will not be. I am interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. For I've imagined every bit of him From his strong moral fiber To the wisdom in his head To the home Have wished yourself to Scarsdale Galahad The breakfast-eating Brooks Brothers type Yes, and I shall meet him when the time is ripe You've got the guy all figured out I have Including what he smokes, all figured out, huh? All figured out Some fly by night Broadway romance. And you'll know at a glance by the two pair of pants. Oh no, by his strong, steady voice, those feet on the ground. Oh no, as I run to his arms, that at last I've come home safe and sound. No, 
no. You're talking about love. You can't dope it like that. What are you picking, a guy or a horse? I wouldn't expect a gambler to understand. Oh, would you like to hear how a gambler feels about the big heartthrob? No. Well, I'll tell you. Mine will come as a surprise to me. Mine, I leave to chance and chemistry. Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Suddenly I'll know when my love comes along. I'll know then and there. I'll know at the sight of her face how I care, how I care, how I care. But I'll stop and I'll stare and I'll know long before we can speak. I'll know in my heart I'll know and I won't ever ask Am I right? Am I wise? Am I smart? But I'll stop and I'll stare at that face in the throne Yes, I'll know when my love I'll drop in again, in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. Garage. I gotta speak with Joey Biltmore. Hey, who's this? Nathan Detroit. Yeah, what do you want, Nathan? I, I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, uh you know. Uh, the, the what? The crap game. The what? The crap game. Hey, wait a minute, Nathan. I got a customer. Oh, hurry it up, will ya? Hurry it up. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, what do you want, Nathan? The, oh, the crap game! You don't say that on the phone, it's supposed to cops are listening! Yeah, sorry, the dice game. Look, Joey, is it okay if I have it at your place tomorrow night? If I get a thousand bucks? Uh, you'll get it tomorrow. Then call me tomorrow. <sighs> Listen, Joey, if you're gonna take that attitude, I might as well just have it someplace else. Then have it someplace else. But where else can I have it? <sighs> Look, Joey, the dough is guaranteed. Would I lie to you? Yes. But I'm getting it from Sky Masterson. How do you know? Because it's a bet. I cannot lose. I bet him he could not take a doll to Havana. Why couldn't he? Because. She ain't the type of doll who goes to Havana. Yeah, where does she go? Oh, she don't go no place. <laughs> so I know I'm gonna win. Yeah, don't be so sure. It ain't a horse, it's a doll. But Joey... Listen, Nathan. Sweetheart, there will be no crap game here tomorrow night unless I get my dough in advance. Joey, sweetheart, you've known me for a long time. Yeah, that's why I wanted an advance. Well, I can't talk no more. I gotta go meet Adelaide at the hot box. Just one thing. Can I at least say it's gonna be at your place tomorrow night? Not till I get the dough. Mm, fine, you'll get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm, I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker.
And now, for the grand finale of our Round the World Review, we take you down on the farm with our star, Miss Adelaide and the Hotbox Farmerettes. <laughs> What a good song. <laughs> I love you, a bushel and a peck. Oh, that lousy Joey Biltmore, I gotta find a spot. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> Hello, pie face. How are you, handsome? Oh, I'm fine. What do you got there? A book. <laughs> a book? Oh, you're reading a lot of these lately. You're becoming a regular bookie. <laughs> Nathan, darling, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. How is your cold? It's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had it, and I told him a long time. And I said I thought it was on account of my dancing with hardly any clothes on, which is what I usually wear. <laughs> so he said to read this book because he said it might be due to psychology. Oh, you ain't got that, have you? Nathan, this is the psychology that tells you why girls do certain kinds of things. Oh. Say, would it tell you what kind of doll would go for a certain kind of guy, even though you don't think she would do so? What do you mean? Well, I'm just for instance. But there are certain dolls you can almost bet they wouldn't go for certain guys. <laughs> Nathan, darling, no matter how terrible a fella seems, you can never be sure that some girl won't go for him. Take us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nathan, starting next week, I'm going to get a raise, so with what I'll be making, I wondered what he would think. Maybe we could finally get married? 
Well, of course, we're going to sooner or later. I know, Nathan, but I'm starting to worry about Mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Well, Nathan, this is something I never told you before, but my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Well, why would she think a thing like that? I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They all get married. And why is it such a small state? <laughs> anyway, I wrote her I was married. Oh, well, you did, huh? Uh-huh. Then, after about two years... What, after about two years? We had a baby. Mm, you told your mother we had a baby? I had to, Nathan. Mother wouldn't have understood if we hadn't. Well, well what type baby was it? It was a boy. <laughs> I named him after you, Nathan. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, where's Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote Mother he won the football game last Saturday. Ah, I wish I had bet on it. <laughs> but, Nathan, that's not all, Nathan. Oh, don't tell me he has a little sister. <laughs> all those years, Nathan, Mother. Believes in big families. Oh, just give me the grand total. Five. Mm, your mother must be a glutton for punishment. Anyway, Nathan, now we're finally getting married, and it won't be a lie anymore. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing to a nice old broad like your mother? But Nathan, you don't even know my mother. Oh, I'm gonna meet her soon. And what'll I tell her? What'll I tell her I do with the five kids? Trading them off to the Phillies or something? What are we gonna do? Uh, we could get married. But marriage ain't something you jump into like it was a... Uh, a kettle of fish. We ain't ready. I'm ready, Nathan. What do you think I got in this box? Nathan, what do you think I got in this box? It's Sally's wedding shop. I can't guess. It's a wedding veil. I had it for three years. I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. Would you like to see it? No, it's bad luck. So you see, Nathan, darling, I got the veil. All we need now is a license and a blood test. A what? A blood test. It's a war. Oh, what a city. First they closed my crap game, and now they want to open up my veins. Nathan, you're not planning on running your crap game again. What? No! Why do you think I gave up the crap game? It's because I love you, and I want us to be the happiest married couple there is in the world. Anybody see an earring out here? I don't think so. You! I'm all dated up tomorrow night with Society Max, and he breaks it on account of your dopey crap game. <sighs> Honest Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, here it is. Adelaide, I'm down on my knees. Oh, get up, it reminds me of your crap game. Oh, you're getting yourself worked up. Look, you and I, we're gonna be all right after all. We're getting married. I don't believe you anymore. But it's true. Come on, you'll feel better tomorrow. Cheer up, honey. Let's see that old smile. That's my girl. I'll see you tomorrow. It says here, the average unmarried female, basically insecure, due to some long frustration may react with psychosomatic symptoms difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a person can develop a cold. You can spray her wherever you figure the strep to cock guy lurk. You can give her a shot, but whatever she's got, it just won't work. If she's tired of getting the fish eye from the hotel clerk, a person can develop a cold. It says here, the female remaining single, that's me, 
just in the legal sense. Shows a neurotic tendency, see note. Tendency, see note. Oh, see note, clever. <laughs> Chronic organic syndromes. Toxic or hypertense. Involving the eye, the E, the nose, and throat. Hmm. That's very interesting. In other words, just from worrying whether the wedding is on or off, a person can develop a cough. You can feed her all day with a vitamin A and a promo fizz, but the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is. If she's tired of getting a name for herself in the name, it is a person can develop a cold. And furthermore, just from stalling and stalling and stalling the wedding trip, Develop la grip. When they get on the train for Niagara and she can hear church bells chime, the compartment is air conditioned and the mood sublime. When they get off at Saratoga for the 40th time, a person can develop la grip, la grip. Post-nasal drip with the wheezes and the sneezes and a sinus is really a pip. From a lack of community property and a feeling she's getting too old, a person can develop a Nicely. What are you looking at? Sky was just following Miss Sarah, and oh, you should have seen her. She gave him a look that would have cooled off a moose at mating time. Ooh. Oh, great, just so we don't take her to Havana. Havana? He going to take that doll to New Rochelle. Where's Nathan? He ought to start lining up the game. I don't know. I suppose trying to see Miss Adelaide, she's mad at him again. That Miss Adelaide, she is always trying to take his mind off of honest work. Yes, it is too bad that a smart businessman like Nathan has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. Benny, that is his weakness, and we should be tolerant, because I am told that it is a worldwide weakness. Look. What's playing at the Roxy? I'll tell you what's playing at the Roxy. A picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl that he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. That's what's playing at the Roxy. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. Story about a guy who sold his wife a small ruby with what otherwise would have been his union dues. That's what's in the Daily News. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guy sitting home by a television set who once used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is the thing that has licked him. And, and it, it looks, looks like Nathan's just another victim. Yes, sir, when you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some doll. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John could be for a Jane. When you meet a gent paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could fly in the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guy's only doing it for some dough. When you see a Joe spending half of his dough, you can bet they'll be making it for some dough. When a bum buys wine like a bum can't afford, it's a cinch that the bum is under the thumb of some little broad. When you meet a mug lately out of the jug And he's still lifting platinum falderall Call it hell, call it heaven But it's probable 12 to 7 That the guy's only doing it for some doll Well 
when you see a sport and his cash has run short, make a bet that he's banking it with some doll. When a guy wears tails with the front gleaming white, who the hell do you think he's tickling pink on Saturday night? When a lazy slob gets a good steady job and he smells from Vite's house and Barbasol. Call it dumb, call it clever, ah, but you can give odds forever that the guy's only doing it for some dumb, some dumb, some dumb. The guy's only doing it for some dumb. Well, we finally lost him. I do think you should have paid some attention to him. Yes, he attended every street meeting we had this morning. Oh, he must be very interested in our work. Very. By the way, uh, <laughs> you spoke beautifully this morning, Sarah. No, I can't reach these people. I never should have volunteered for this post. Well, let's go to lunch. And I was going to convert Broadway all by myself. I was going to take these gamblers and have them just begging to come to the mission. General Cartwright! Good morning, Sarah. Arvide. Good morning, General. We didn't know you were coming to town, General. I got in early this morning. I've spent the last hour trying to find you. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been holding some extra street meetings trying to Good stimulate morning, General! Oh. Good morning. Sarah, there's something I need to talk to you about. Won't you come inside, have some lunch with us? No, I don't have time, dear. I have several other calls to make. Sarah, we at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We have decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh, no. Close the mission? But, General, please, someone can do good here, even if I can't. Sarah, there are so many calls on us. So many other places where our work is really needed. But we are doing much better so now. So you a meeting for tomorrow night. <laughs> You've announced a meeting, but will anyone be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me, I couldn't help over here. General, my name is Sky Masterson. Former sinner. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> General, I wish to protest the closing of this mission. And I believe Miss Sarah can be a big success here. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. A dollar will get you ten. What? General, might I make a suggestion? Yes? Why don't you come to the meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> You all got your carnations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, no one will be let into the game without they got their red carnations. It's like a password. Okay, but where's the game? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get back to you in a minute. Nathan! Is it all set? Can I tell the guys it's at the Biltmore Garage? Not yet. I gotta stall them. Joey wants his dough first. But it's 11 o'clock. They won't wait around much longer. So sue me. I left nicely at the hotel to wait for the money from Sky. It'll be there. What? What is the dough? It hasn't come yet. But I told you to wait for it. I had to get some groceries. I felt a little faint. Get back to the hotel and wait for the money from Sky, And don't come back here without it, even if you have to starve to death. OK, Nathan. Where's the game, Detroit? Harry the horse. How's everything in Brooklyn? Detroit, if you do not have no place for your game, Tell us, and we'll seek elsewhere for entertainment. Well, now settle down, Harry. I hope, Detroit, you will not spoil our evening. Inasmuch as I happen to be entertaining a very prominent guest tonight, I think you might have heard of him. I'd like you to meet Big Julie from Chicago. <laughs> How do you do, Big Julie? <coughs> Welcome to our fair city. Well, as you know, the heat is on. Just stay patient and you'll get some action. 
What do you say, Big Julie? Shall we stick around or shall we blow? I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Sure, sure. Nathan, if there's no crap game tonight, I'm sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. And Big Julie does not like to be displeased, as you can find out from those citizens who at one time or another displeased him. Although I must admit, it's very hard to find such citizens in view of the fact that they're no longer around and about. <laughs> Well, now, Harry the horse, you do not think I would be so bad as to displease a gentleman like Big Julie over here? Big Julie, believe me when I tell you that when Nathan Detroit, oh, he's got a gun, <laughs> when Nathan Detroit arranges something, you can count on it. <laughs> well, 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 an interesting gathering indeed, the, the cream of society. And the awesome Society Max, Rusty Charlie, Little Lips Louie. Mm. And uh, Harry the Horse, straight from Brooklyn. And I'm sorry, I'm very bad on names. You mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. Mm. What do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. Well, don't ever help my mother across the street. Lovely. This looks like the male chorus from, <gasps> from Blossom Time. What's the occasion? Well, we... It's um, a party. Mm, what kind of a party? It's, you know what kind of party it's, it's, it's uh, a party. We're uh, having the... Uh, what kind of party it, was It's it? a bachelor dinner. Okay. Nathan's getting married. What, what do you mean? Uh, what? That is correct, Lieutenant, a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. Yes, sir. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody cannot deny. Where's the lovely bride? Well, oh boy, at least I have a lady. Well, I'm sure she's a lovely lady. lovely bride. With 100% eyes. Yeah. Oh, boy. There she is. Is that true? Adelaide. Did you hear the news? Nathan's getting married. Nathan's, no. Nathan's no. getting married. Nathan, I'm so thrilled. Why didn't you tell me? It was a surprise. But when I saw you standing here with all these fine gentlemen, <laughs> I never dreamed it was a bachelor dinner. I thought it was a... Oh, no, it's a bachelor dinner. It is definitely a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, a bachelor dinner. Just think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to be Mrs. Nathan Detroit. <laughs> Time certainly does fly by. Tell me, Nathan, when is the happy day? When will it be, Nathan? Uh, it, uh, Nathan, okay. your friends have been nice enough to throw you a bachelor dinner. You might as well tell them when the wedding is. Uh, well... Uh, we need time for the license and for the blood test. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get married tomorrow night, right after the show at the Hot Box? Adelaide, we need time for the license. You could elope. What? You could, uh, drive down to Maryland. What's the name of that town? Pimlico. No, not Pimlico, Nathan, no. <laughs> Elkton, they'll marry you right away. They don't require a blood test. That unhealthy. Uh, Nathan, that's a great idea. A lope. I'll, uh, I'll lend you my getaway car. Uh, my Buick. Oh, Nathan, let's do it. No. What the hell? Yay! Yay! My congratulations to Nathan. And I only hope there is nothing in heredity. <laughs> Nathan, I got so many things to do before we elope. You'll be at the hot box tomorrow night. I'll have a table reserved and I'll be wearing whatever you will open. <laughs> Nathan, I'm so happy. I ought to wire my mother. Only, what do I wire her? Send the telegram. Date it back. I better wait until we have five children. It won't take us long. <laughs> Nathan, you are indeed a lucky fellow. A most beautiful doll indeed. Do you agree, Big Julie? Tell me, how long you know the dog? Fourteen Let's years. Let's shoot crap. 
Nathan, you gotta find a place for the crap game! Well, how can I? The money from Sky ain't come yet. But what if it don't come? What if he took the doll to Havana? But there's no way he could have taken her. She wouldn't have gone. She couldn't have gone! Wait, here's the oh, mission. Let's count. Oh, one, two, three, five, six. Three, no, 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 four, one, four, two, five, four, six, four, six, five, seven, eight, nine, 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 ten, eleven, nine, twelve, nine, thirteen. So if there was fourteen 11. before and there's thirteen now, that. Oh, no. Ah! the second oldest mission in Cuba. Come on! Where to? To see the oldest. Don't miss the dungeons where prisoners were thrown to the sharks. Sounds like a million laughs. Here is buried Christopher Columbus. Oh, at least he's lying down. <laughs> How about a drink? A milkshake, please. Dulce de leche. These are delicious. What did you call them? Dulce de leche. Dulce de leche. What's in it? <laughs> Besides milk. No sugar. And the kind of native flavoring. What's the name of the flavoring? Bacardi. <laughs> It's very good. I'll have another. Only enough to act as a preservative. You know, this would be a wonderful way to get children to drink milk. <laughs> Take it easy, slugger. It's over and you're still champ. 
Are you all right? <laughs> Am I all right? Ask me. How do I feel? Ask me now that we are cozy and clinging. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kiss tonight, that's the way I just gotta behave. Boy, if I were a lamp, I'd light. Or if I were a banner, I'd wave. Ask me, how do I feel? Little me with my quiet upbringing. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a gate, I'd be swinging. And if I were a watch, I'd start popping my spring. Or if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ask me how do I feel from this chemistry lesson I'm learning. Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bridge, I'd be burning. <laughs> yes, I knew my morale would crack from the wonderful way that you looked. Boy, if I were a duck, I'd quack. <laughs> or if I were a goose, I'd be cooked. Ask me how do I feel. Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. my dressing ask me how to describe this whole beautiful thing well if I were a bell I'd go ding dong ding dong for a few days so we can see how wonderful it's really like. <laughs> I think we better hurry if we want to catch the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. Oh, you are no gentleman. <laughs> Look, a doll like you should not be mixed up with a guy like me. It's no good. I'm no good. Do you want to know why I took you to Havana? I made a bet. That's how I met you in the first place. I made a bet. How else would a girl get to meet a gambler? Come on. No, no. I've got to think what's best for you. Oh, you talk just like a missionary. Thank you for bringing me back. I must have behaved very badly. No, you were fine. Ollie, I don't know how I'll get home with all this stuff. It was wonderful of you to give it to me. Oh, oh Sky, hello. How are you, Miss Adelaide? Oh, fine, Sky. Look, the girls gave me a kitchen shower. They went to an all-night drugstore and surprised me with a kitchen shower. Look. <laughs> what vulgar jewelry! <laughs> That's, that's wonderful, Miss Adelaide. You know Miss Sarah. Glad to. How do you do? <laughs> you know, Skye, we're eloping tomorrow night right after the Hot Fox, Nathan and I. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Gee, I feel just like a housewife already. <laughs> I'm gonna love being in the kitchen. <laughs> I tried all the other rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adelaide certainly seems happy. She's in love. Yeah, I guess so. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock. This is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. <laughs> You're finding out something I've known for quite a while. My time of day is the dark time 
A couple of deals before dawn When the street belongs to the cop And the janitor with the mop And the grocery clerks are all gone When the smell of the rain-washed pavement Comes up clean and fresh and cold And the street lamp light Fills the gutter with gold That's my time of day My time of day And you're the only doll I've ever wanted to share it with me Obadiah. Obadiah? What's that? Obadiah Masterson. That's my real name. You're the first person I ever told it to. I've never been in love before. Now all at once it's you. It's you forevermore. I've never been in love before I thought my heart was safe I thought I knew the score But this is wine That's all too strange and strong I'm full of foolish song And out my song must pour so please forgive this helpless haze I'm in I've really never been in love before I've never been in love before Now all at once it's you, it's you I'm in I've really never been in love before Grandfather, I thought you'd be a Hello, Sarah, dear. Good morning, Brother Masterson. Good morning. We followed your suggestion in Stato all night. We spoke to a lot of sinners. Where have you been, Sarah? I've been to Cuba. Right. You're even more tired than I am. <laughs> what the hell is this? What is this? Canasta! Hey, wait a minute! I'm losing 10 G's! Someone must have tipped them off! I've seen a lot of crazy things in my time, but this is the first time I've ever seen a, a, a floating crap game going full blast in a mission! Crap game? Sarah, you know I have nothing to do with this, don't you? Sarah! This wouldn't have happened! No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? Will I see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What the hell kind of doll are you anyway? 
I'm a mission doll. <laughs> <laughs>